Hey there, my name is Dr. Eric Powitzki, and today we'll be doing an art lesson by the Swiss-born German artist, Paul Klee. And this is his portrait of a clown or portrait of a yellow man. And we're going to be learning today how Paul Klee uses simple shapes and simple colors to make abstract not realistic, but abstract pictures. And in this case, an abstract face of a clown. He's used simple shapes and simple colors to make a really unique painting that's instantly recognizable anywhere in the world. Let's cover real quickly which supplies I've chosen for this project. I've got my reference painting. I've also decided to use the Not Your Ordinary Crayons, although you could use the other acrylic or soft pastels. I have these paint brushes standing by because I may mix it with water and see how that does on the crayons once we've got some color down. And I thought about using this for the circle for his head, but it seemed a little too small. So I just grabbed a paper plate from my cabinet and I'll use that for the head. And then I also would like to have a ruler, but I didn't have a ruler. So I just found this piece of cardboard and cut it out and I'll use this as the ruler um, so I can draw a straight line and so forth. Okay, so I'm going to be looking at the photograph while I begin the drawing. This is his painting that he called Senecio. It's a clown. You can see that it sort of resembles a clown face with these big splotches of color. So this is Senecio. Some people call it the portrait of a man or some people call it portrait of a yellow man. And it has lots of colors and very simple shapes, but it's instantly recognizable to us as an abstract face. And we're going to talk about some of the reason why that is. I'd just like for you to begin noticing that he's got a big circular head and he's got a square neck and there's some shoulders here. There's lots of background and obviously the two eyes are a bit uneven with an eyebrow and some big purple cheeks here and a small mouth and a nose that leads down to the mouth and maybe some color that looks like maybe this might be paint on the face or something like a clown might have. But I want you to notice something else. The lines that he's used, he's divided up the, in the face into different parts. And this is actually something that we need to take a closer look at. If any of you have taken any drawing classes, you might see that people who draw immediately start learning about how we can make a circular head and a chin. And if we can divide the face into one, two, three parts, and then here's the neck, we can divide the face into multiple sections. The nose takes up the third section if you divided this face into one, two, three, four, five pieces going up and down, then the nose would fill the third piece. And so there's lots of ways that we can sort of divide up the face and it helps you learn to draw. And this is something that we also use in medicine. In medicine, we look at the way that the face is structured and we look at someone's middle third of their face here or the lower half of their face. And in medicine, we do something called facial analysis, 
which is just based on, see how the, see how the eye takes up a whole fifth of the face? And this eye takes up a whole fifth of the face. And then the distance between the two eyes is exactly the same as one eye length. So the eye makes up about a fifth of the face here. And then the distance between the two eyes makes up about a fifth of the face. And that's about the same distance as the nose, although you could have a little bit wider nose. And so that helps you learn to draw and it helps you with other things too. We use this in, in medicine in something called facial analysis. And lots of people have done a lot of work about exactly the distance between the two eyes and how wide the mouth should be and how tall the lips should be and so forth. But this is really just, not that it should be like that, but it's really just something fun to notice about people and notice about people's faces and notice about, uh, notice these things help us draw. And in a very simple way, that's what Paul Clay did. Paul Clay has a face and he has a neck and shoulders and he's divided the face into thirds. He's divided the two halves of the face, the right half and the left half. And he purposely has changed the eyes and the nose and the mouth so that they're not a real eyes and a nose or a mouth, but they're abstractions of those things. So I'm gonna begin by making the circular head. And then I notice the neck is a box that he's drawn. So I'll use my ruler and I'll just try to make as good of a square as I can. If this was a ruler, I could actually measure it and make a real square. And then I'm gonna draw some shoulders. And then he has a circle there and some lines here, here, here. And then he's kind of divided up this. And you can divide these the way that you want. Looks like to me that he's divided this into three equal pieces. So I'm just gonna do I'm gonna divide this into three and three. Now you notice he doesn't have all of his lines there and we're gonna talk about that in a second. The next thing that we'll do is we will divide the face. Remember using our facial analysis, it looks like to me that he's got a line that goes straight down the face all the way to the middle. And then it looks like to me that he's divided his face into three parts. And then he has also added some lines that go here and here. He has added some lines that kind of curve like this to the face. And he has made a nose with lines that do that. And then you've noticed that he didn't stick with this line. He made one eye below this line. And then he made one eye sort of above this line or on this line. And then he drew a nice circle for eyes. And the circle in this eye looks a little bit bigger than the circle in the other eye, but you can make them any size you want. And he has some other lines that he's connected. He seems to like these lines going from one line to the other line. He doesn't really stop his lines. 
but we're gonna go back and take some of this out. So let me show you what I mean by that. Not all of the lines that I've drawn in using my dividing up the circle and dividing up the squares actually appear in the painting, but I think he planned them that way, except not all of them are still there. So you'll notice that this line, this pink box in the circle, I mean in the neck here, is there and this box is there, but the other boxes aren't there anymore. So I'm gonna take out the lines. I'm gonna go back and take out some of the lines, even though I think that they were meant to be there. I'm gonna take out some of the lines. For example, this eyebrow, it doesn't really continue with the color, even though the line's still there in the color, but the green doesn't go all the way. So I wanna to remember to not go all the way. So I'm gonna take that line out. And then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna take some of this line out and take some of this line out so that it's not a line that goes all the way down. And that's pretty good. Now I'm gonna start adding in some color for the background. And if you look closely at your picture, you can see that there's actually different colors coming through. It's almost like he put a darker color underneath it, and then he put a lighter color on top of it, and then scratched some of that out or mixed it together. So I'm gonna start with the background and that's what I'm gonna to try to do. I'm gonna put this background down but see how I do it? I'm gonna do it kind of messy. It doesn't have to be all complete. Cause then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna use my finger. And I'm just gonna rub this so that it's more uniform. And just to see what happens, now I'm gonna go back on top of it with this other color. And I'm gonna see if my idea works. See if it looks like one color is sort of shining through the other color. I might even add some white in just to lighten it up some. See if these colors mix together. His colors don't stick with the lines and neither will mine. So it's gonna look smudgy. And I'm gonna leave it that way on purpose. Okay, I'm gonna work on the rest of the background and then we'll start with the face. Okay, I've gotten a lot of my background done by really pushing hard with my fingers, putting the crayons on very thick and then really pushing. And in this background, I've used pink and yellow and brown and orange and white. I've used all these really warm or hot colors. And if you want it to be a little darker, you can put more brown. And if you want it to be a little more orange, you can use more orange. And I can go back and add in more color later, but I'm pretty happy with my first background. So now we're gonna start on the face. And now I'm looking at my pictures again here. And I think I might start with the purples and blues to just give me some marks to look at. You can choose whatever colors you want. Oh, I see. I've got a line here that I could erase. I don't really want my line showing up on my paper later. So I could erase that because I'm gonna make this whole square purple. I'm leaving a little white to show through and I'm gonna use my hand and I'm gonna go back and fill it in. 
And then I'm gonna take this blue color. It's not exactly like what he's done. And I'm gonna fill in the blue. I'm leaving a little white to show through. And I'm gonna use my finger. Since my finger still has purple on it, some of the purple's coming through, but I, I like the way that looks. And then it looks like he's got purple squares here. Try to go over the pencil lines with my paint, with my crayons, so it covers them up. He's got another purple area here. I don't want it to be exactly the same color as that purple. So I'm gonna bring in this pink and I'm gonna add in some pink and then mix those together. And that'll make that purple just a little bit different than the other purple. Okay. And then it looks like he's got some red here. Like that. And he has some white. The paper's already white, but this is a little bit of a different white. He's got some yellow. And there's lots more yellow here. In fact, I think that some people even referred to this painting as the man in yellow or the yellow man or the yellow clown. There's actually a lot of yellow in the background. Use lots of yellow here. See, I got a lot of extra yellow there, so I can kind of smooth it out. And I made yellow in the spots where he made yellow. But he's also got some other yellow in some places that are almost like smudges, so I'm just gonna add those in. I'm gonna smudge this a little. And this is all white here, but I think what he's done is, I think he's made this a little bit pink and then he painted that in the background, I think. See, it looks messy, but I'm gonna bet that if I put a little bit of color in the background and then go over it with some white, and I'm not gonna completely cover up all the color. I'm gonna add in white where I want it, but I'm gonna let some of the color show through like he has. And he even has white patches in places. I don't care that my fingers have purple on them. One cool thing that I've discovered is that I can go and I can take my little paint thing, paint holder, if, if yours is clean, and you can add some water to it. See, I've just added water and I've taken one paintbrush and then I have just applied a little bit of water to the surface of these rosy red cheeks. Mine are red, his are more like purple. And this makes this even smoother and mixes the paints together so it kind of makes it more like paint. It makes it smooth and soft and helps me kind of color in the edges because it kind of spreads the paint out some. Since I haven't added any color to my paintbrush, just water, I can go back and add some to the yellow and some to the white also, and then go back over those with my fingers and smooth out that yellow. And it makes it a little bit more dull and stretches it out a little bit more. So I'm really gonna do that with my white because I've got a lot of area to cover in with white. Got a little area over here that I want to add in some more 
brown. And then there's some brown up there that I want to add in. There's some lighter brown. So I'm going to make a lighter brown by using this paint, this water with yellow and dark brown. And then when I add in the water, that's hopefully really going to smooth it out and make it more like a light brown. So that'll help me fill in some of these areas here, which on the painting are more of like a light brown. See, I, I use yellow and dark brown to make some lighter brown. And now I've got kind of a new color that I didn't have before. And you can spend as much time making it perfect as you want, or you can be purposely kind of messy with it, like I have been, because I want my colors to mix together. Because this is not a real face. This is an abstract face. So I'm gonna use very just, now my, now my water just has some color in it. And I'm just gonna continue filling in my blank spots with what essentially is just this colored water and then when it dries, it's gonna be like paint again. I'm gonna mix these together. It's not exactly like his painting. I'm gonna leave my yellow yellow. His eyebrow. I like that. Let's go back in and add in a nice eyebrow that he's got. My eyebrow goes like that. I want to get some real dark red eyes. The eyes are kind of the first thing you look at when you look at this picture. And he's maybe added just a little bit of yellow. I don't know if it's yellow or just white. Maybe a little bit of a yellow nose, I mean red nose, with some brown, maybe some orange, I don't know. I mean, I want my nose to be better than his nose. Finish by adding in some here. And you can continue working on your painting as much as you want, but that's my clown.